I've always liked the idea of having a small little portable solar generator that you can use to power and charge your electronics. And when it runs out of juice, you can just take it outside, unfold the included solar panels and have it charge up back to full. And that's exactly what I made. And it all starts with this right here. A 12 volt, 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It's got 25 amps of max discharge current. It's got some nice screw top terminals and it's not too heavy. I also have an inverter. It's a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. It's got some nice screw terminals on the back. It's got two full size outlets and two USB ports for charging. Next, a small solar charge controller. It's 10 amp max. It's got a small screen. It's got two buttons. It's got inputs for solar panels and it's got outputs for charging a battery. I also got two of these extension cords. They have a nice round circle flush mount and a nice weather seal gasket over it. And there's one for each of the outlets. Next, I have something similar except for USB. It's a circle flush mount and it's just gonna extend those ports from the inverter. I also have a really nice switch and I'm just gonna be using the top part. And it's just a really nice weather resistant switch. I have a small 12 volt light that I'm using for the power indicator. I also have a small roll of just some vinyl and I'm gonna be using this as like a screen protector. And of course we have our solar panels. I ended up going with these two solar panels for their small size. They just unvelcro and fold out into a pretty large array and they're each rated at 60 watts. They also unzip and have a little barrel plug adapter that I can attach some cords to and I just love how they fold into such a small little package. I also ended up getting a small little lithium iron phosphate charger just in case I ever wanted to charge it without the solar panels. So with all the components out of the way, it's time to start building the enclosure for this thing. So I go ahead and measure, mark, and begin to cut out all the pieces for the sides of this box. And with all the pieces cut out, I go ahead and begin to just line them up initially just to make sure everything fits nice and snug. Once I'm happy with the shape of it, I take some wood clamps and I clamp the sides together. Then I take my drill and I drill and screw the sides of the box to make sure that they're nice and tight. And with the walls together, I can tell this is going to be super solid. I go ahead and lay the top on, I clamp that in place, and I drill and screw that in tight. And I do the exact same for the bottom. I take the clamps off and I admire the final shape of the box. Super strong and I'm super happy with it. I then take a pencil and I mark out what needs to be drilled out for the front panel and I begin drilling out the holes and this is going to be holes for the outlets, the USB ports, the lights and everything like that. I then take a router and I go around where the monitor is going to be just because I think it's going to look a lot smoother that way. Now it's time to start taking some wood stain and paint it on the whole surface of the box. I ended up going with a really dark wood stain this time just because I think it's going to look really nice up against the really dark green of the solar panels and I'm glad I did. And the next day it was nice and dry and it was looking really good. I then took the front panel and I ended up routing two of the smaller holes on it just because I think it's going to be easier to install the switches. I then take the battery and I fit it in temporarily. I made a small brace to hold it in place and I go ahead and drill and screw that in the box to make sure it's nice and secure. I then remove just the top part of the brace so I can take out the battery because I have to drill a couple more holes. And these holes are going to be where the solar panel cord is going to go into the charge controller. So with the hole drilled out on both sides, it was time to install some handles. I drilled four holes, I took some bolts and washers, and I attached them through the box. I ended up using nuts and bolts because I think it's going to be a lot stronger than just using screws in the wood. And with the handles on there, it was looking really nice. I like the color of them against the wood, and they're going to be nice and strong so I can carry this with me. Now that the bottom's built out, it's time to focus on the front panel. So I grabbed myself that sheet of vinyl, I laid it out over the window I want, and I cut out a small rectangle just larger than it. Then I go ahead and laid it flat, and I took my staple gun and I just stapled that into place. I then took some hot glue and I glued on some small pieces of the wood on the side of the window. And this is just going to be there to hold it in place as I drill some holes in it and then screw them down to make them nice and permanent. I then dry fit in the solar charge controller just to make sure it fits and I lay the back plate on it and I go ahead and drill and screw that in as well. And you can see this is where the charge controller is going to sit and since it's just vinyl I'm still able to push the buttons. Now it's time to start focusing on some wiring. I take one of the barrel plug wires that came with the solar panels, I cut it in half and I attach it together in parallel and I go ahead and add a little bit of solder and heat treat tubing. And this is just so I can attach two solar panels and have it have one output. And then on the end of the wire I attach a terminal and I crimp it on for some really secure connections. I then went ahead and made all of the other wires I need for the project and always make sure you're using the correct thickness of wire. 
I also extended the wires on the LED light and I took the wires that came with the inverter, I cut off the clamp ends and I added my own little fork ends. Now it's time to start connecting everything together. At first I took my switch and all the wires. I then went ahead and unscrewed the terminal connections on the switches. I placed in the little forks and I tightened them down for secure connections. The first switch is going to be responsible for connecting and disconnecting the solar panels to the charge controller and the second switch is going to be responsible for connecting and disconnecting the battery to the inverter. Looking good and sounding better. Time to install them into the front plate. So I go ahead and slide in all the wires into the correct holes and I pull the switch panel in front of it. I then go ahead and take the screws it came with and I screw them into the wood. And this is the part where I forgot the gasket so I had to take it off, put the gasket on, then I screwed it back down. And I think the switches look fantastic. Next is time to install the USB ports. I slid it into place, I turned it over, and then I realized it's not thick enough for me to screw on the screw part. So I ended up taking the hot glue gun, squirting some hot glue in it, and then I ended up just gluing on the screw part at the end just because I felt like I wanted to use it. Next I slid in the little LED light, and then on the back of it I put a little bit of hot glue to keep it in place as well time to install the outlets. I go ahead and slide them both into place. Then I take the screws that they came with and I just screwed them into the wood as well. The front panel is really coming along. So now it's time to flip it over and install the solar charge controller. I go ahead and put in all the correct terminals and I screw them down nice and tight. I remove the backing. I add some stuff called alien tape and I put a little bit on the front of the unit. I flip it over and I place it right over the screen. I then take some more of the alien tape and I build up a couple layers on the back of it just so it backs up to the back plate and I go ahead and I screw that down to make sure it's nice and tight. And you can see we got it installed perfect. The buttons still work. With the front panel done, it's time to start installing everything else into the box, starting with the battery. I ended up taking some alien tape, cutting some strips of it, placing on the bottom, and I'm going to use it to act as a little bit of a cushion insulator and to help stick it in place. I then put a little bit of alien tape on the top mount as well, and this is just going to really help squeeze it in there. With the battery in place, it's time to install the inverter. I put some alien tape on the bottom of it, and I go ahead and I stick that down where I'd like it to be. I also take some screws, and I go ahead and just screw it down into the baseboard as well. I then took the LED light and I attached it to the terminals on the inverter so that when the inverter gets powered on, so does the LED. I then go ahead and begin to wire up the battery. I attach the charge controller, the inverter, and also a terminal for the charger that I can plug into a wall. And I do that on each positive and negative side. I then go ahead and plug in the extension cords. Then I plug in the USB cords as well. They are a little bit short, but I was able to make it work. Then I went ahead and closed up the lid of the box. I put in a bunch of screws and I screwed it down nice and tight. You can see how there's two cords sticking out the front. One is for the solar panel and the other is for the wall charger. And the last step to do is to install the solar panels. I tip it on its side, I undo the solar panel, I hold it where I want it to be, I take a screw and some flat washers, and I just go ahead and I screw it on through this fabric part right here. I fold the panel back up and I attach it to the velcro. I attach the DC barrel plug and I also throw in the little wall outlet adapter. I turn the generator on its side and I repeat the process. I put the solar panel where I want it, I screw it down with four of these screws, then I fold it back up and then I attach the DC barrel plug and I zip it up for safekeeping. And it's complete. It's finally complete. And it looks really nice. If you can see, there's the little LCD monitor and it gives you some nice information like the system voltage, the charge cutoff, the temperature. It also tells you the solar panel voltage and if there's any errors. We also have the switches. This switch right here, when you turn it on, connects the solar panels to the charge controller. And the other switch turns on the inverter. It turns on the little LED, letting you know that your outlets and USB ports have power. So let's go ahead, power it on, test it out, and see what we can do. I go ahead and test out my old PlayStation with the screen on it, just because I think it would be a perfect test run for it. I power it on, and it's working like a charm. It's too bad it doesn't make you better at video games though. Now it's time to test out the USB ports. I pop in a cord and I just plug in a little tablet, and sure enough, it starts charging right away. I then go ahead and try something with a little more power, a small little laptop. I plug it in, and yeah, charging right away. I then grab a computer monitor, I placed it behind the laptop, I plug that in, and now we have it running the laptop and the monitor at the same time. I'm thoroughly impressed. 
I then thought it'd be funny to take the adapter for the wall outlet, plug it in, and then plug it into itself to have it power and charge itself, which I think is pretty silly. Now that we know it works as a power station, let's go and take it outside and charge it up with some sunlight. It's not super heavy, but it's also not super light, but it's pretty portable. You take it outside, you unvelcro the solar panels, you just undo them, lay them out on the ground, and it kind of reminds me of a satellite to be honest. Then I go ahead and flip the switch that connects the solar panels to the charge controller. And if we check the monitor, it says we're charging at 2.2 amps, which is fantastic. So let's let this sit out in the sun for a while and get some charge on it. And it's a perfect sunny day to try it out. So it's been charging for about five hours right now. I'm gonna go ahead and pack it up. We're gonna take it inside and we're gonna see how full the battery is. And it's a super simple cleanup. You just literally fold up the panels, stick it back on the Velcro, grab it by the handles, and you're off. When we started charging the battery this morning, the controller was reading 13 volts, just 13 volts flat. And this is the graph that came with my battery, and it says 13 volts is right around 30% full charge. And we ended the day with 13.3 volts, and according to the chart, it means we're around 90% full capacity charge. And I'm super happy and impressed with that for being out in the sun for around 4.5-5 hours. I also wanted to see what would happen if I just did one solar panel side and did it behind a window, and we were getting around 1.1 amps, which is not bad at all. I also tested the system by running it for around 5 hours straight, charging a little tablet, running a small little light bulb, and running one of my studio LED lights. And it never overheated and only reached 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is nothing to worry about. I've been wanting to make a project like this for quite some time now. I've always liked the idea of solar, just the idea of using the sun to charge things or create energy and run items and things like that. And I've always had this idea of just, just all in one unit with inverter, plugs, outlets, switches, controller, solar panels, just all in one nice little tight contained box. You can just pick it up, take it with you, power your items. And when you're out of juice, you can just literally unfold it all the panels have it charge up and then you can just keep using it and also charge the battery in here and that's exactly what this is just a cool little project that i've been wanting to do and i hope you enjoyed the process with me hopefully you learned something hopefully you just saw something cool or just had fun today and i just want to say thanks for stopping by everybody and i'll catch you all in the next one